How to Train the Human Spirit by Kenneth E. Hagen in his Legacy Bible. Just as the human mind can be trained intellectually, so the human spirit can be trained spiritually. It can be built up in strength just as the body can be built up. Muscles. In this lesson, we will look at four ways this can be accomplished. Number one, meditating on the Word of God. Number two, practicing the Word of God. Number three, giving the Word of God first place and instantly obeying the voice of your spirit. Your spirit. We, as we apply these four principles to our daily lives, we can come to know the will of God even in the minor details of life. Ooh. God communicates with our spirit. God communicates with our spirit, which is the belly. <clears throat> As we, God communicates with our spirit, not with our reasoning, our intellect. Mm. Boy, that's a biggie to get. As we instantly obey our spirit, we will find we are, uh, we are obeying the Holy Spirit. God. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> God said in his word, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. So the, whole, the Bible is telling us where our spirit is resides and it's right here in our midriff that's our that's our belly uh, this means that God is going this is Proverbs 20 27 the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord so searching all the inward parts of the belly Proverbs 20 27 this means that God is going to use our own spirits to guide us the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Meditating on the word of God is the first, <clears throat> the first principle here. The book of the law in Joshua 1, 8 says, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, thou shalt, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have Good success. When God anointed Joshua to lead the children of Israel after Moses' death, God told him at the outset the importance of meditating on the word, in the word. Another translation of the last phrase of Joshua 1.8 says, You will be able to deal wisely in the things of life. Mm. Certainly, we couldn't have good success if we were unable to deal wisely in the things of life. God told Joshua if he would meditate in the word, he would make his way prosperous and Joshua would have good success. The most deeply spiritual men and women I have known are those who give time to meditation. One cannot develop spiritual wisdom without meditation in God's word. One pastor once told me he had been trying to make a success of his church. He flew all over the country visiting many larger churches. He studied their methods and tried to find out what made them successful. He brought their programs and ideas back to his church, but they didn't seem to work. After hearing me teach about meditating in God's word, he decided to try it. Rather than asking God for things, he set aside a certain time daily for meditating in the word. After 30 days had passed at the close of his Sunday morning sermon, a landslide of souls was at the altar. More people were saved in that one service that had been saved in that church in the previous two years. The people were revived and the pastor began to have good success. His testimony can be that of any believer who will follow his example and spend time meditating in God's word. Shut the, door, shut the world out. 
If you have ambitions to do something worthwhile, I suggest you begin by taking 10 or 15 minutes daily for meditation. B begin the development of your spirit. Number two, rule number two, practicing the word of God. James 1.22 says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Practicing the word is what James called being a doer of the word. Some people think that being a doer of the word is keeping the Ten Commandments. Under the New Covenant, however, we have one commandment. And the commandment is that of love. If you love someone, you won't steal from him. You won't lie about him. Paul said that love is the fulfilling of the law. If you walk in love, you won't break any law that was given to curb sin. In this verse of scripture, James is urging believers to do primarily what is written in the epistles to act upon the word. For example, Paul wrote to the Philippians, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, Philippians 4, 6. The Amplified Classic Edition says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. Usually we practice only part of this. Usually we don't mind practicing the part that tells us to pray. But if we practice one part, and not the other, we are not practicing it, not practicing the word. We are not a doer of the word. First, the Lord said not to fret. If we're going to fret and have anxieties, it isn't going to do good to do any good to make requests. If God said not to fret, this means we can keep, we can keep from worrying. God is a just God, and he won't ask us to do something we can't do. There was a time when I believed that I could make my requests known to God, but I had difficulty believing that I didn't need to worry. However, God said we don't have to fret. So I say, I refuse to fret or have any anxiety about anything. And I say that right now. I refuse to fret or have any anxiety about anything. I take my requests to him and then I thank him. I take <clears throat> this, this quiets and pacifies the troubled spirit that the devil would try to make me have. If inner turmoil persists, I simply go right back to the verse and read it again. I keep claiming it. If we follow Paul's advice and do not fret or have anxiety about anything, we can believe, thank you, Jesus, wow. We can believe God for the promise of the verse that follows and the peace of God, which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Many people want what this seventh verse talks about, but they don't want to do what the sixth verse says to do to get it. However, to receive this peace which passeth all understanding, we must be careful for nothing, be worrisome for nothing, be fretful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto God. You know, I just think we ought to take a minute. And I'm just going to invite you to follow me. Lord God, I refuse to worry about anything. I refuse, Lord God to worry about anything. In everything, Lord God, 
by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, I will let my requests be made known to you. The Amplified Bible Classic Edition translates verse 7. God's peace shall garrison and stand guard, mount guard. God's peace will keep guard over your heart and your spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The education of your spirit comes by practicing the word. God, can you reap the results and have peace without being a doer of the word? No, you really can't. Be a doer of the word and you'll, you will grow spiritually. Rule number three, give giving the word first place. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from my, thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. With so many different voices surrounding us, it is difficult to stop and listen to the voice of the word of God. Family and friends are always ready to give their opinions and their advice. However, an essential part of training the spiritual man is learning to listen to what God's word has to say to us. It is giving the word first place in our lives. In the verses quoted above, that's Proverbs 4, 20 to 22, God tells us to do three things with his word. Listen to it, read it, memorize it. <laughs> it's not so hard, is it? Listen to it, read it, memorize it. In verse 20, we read, incline thine ear unto my sayings. That's obviously listening to it. Anytime the Bible is being read aloud in church, in family devotions or gospel, gospel YouTube videos or, or whatever modern technology we use today, give careful attention to its words. Verse 21 tells us, let them not depart from thine eyes. In other words, spend time alone listening and reading to God's word. Well, actually, this is only reading. Depart from thine eyes. Spend time alone reading God's word. Let us sink deep into your, let it sink deep into your thoughts and your heart. Memorize it. Keep it in the midst of your heart. If you do these th three things, you will find that God's word words are life unto you and health to all your flesh. You will enter into the abundant life in Christ Jesus. You will find physical healing for your body. All you need to do is give God's word first place in your life. And rule number four, instantly obey the voice of our spirit. The human spirit has a voice. We call that voice conscience. Sometimes we call it intuition or we call it an inner voice or of guidance. And if it is, it is our spirit talking to us. Every man has a voice whether he is saved or unsaved. But the new birth is a rebirth of the human spirit. Your spirit gets its information as you meditate upon the word. Learn to obey your spirit. Your spirit has the life and nature of God. Because the Holy Spirit dwells in you, the devil can't be giving you the information because he is not in you. He is on the outside of you. God has to communicate with you through your spirit because that is where he is. He isn't in your head. He isn't in your reasoning. He isn't in, he is in your spirit. Your spirit 
gets its information through him. Learn to obey your spirit. Some people say that conscience is not a safe guide, but this isn't always true. The conscience, the conscience is a safe guide in the spirit-filled believer. God is dwelling within that believer. That is why. The believer's conscience, the voice of his spirit, becomes the voice of God. Woo! The believer's conscience, the voice of his spirit, becomes the voice of God. God is speaking to him. Paul said he obeyed his conscience in Acts 23, verse 1. And in Proverbs again, 20, 27, it says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. God will use your spirit to guide you. He will use it to enlighten you. As, you, as your spirit meditates and feeds upon the word, it becomes a safer guide. It is trained in the word. The Holy Spirit does speak a little differently to those of us who have certain ministry gifts. As a rule, in the lives of believers, the inward voice is the voice of the human spirit speaking, not the Holy Spirit. I'll read that again. The Holy Spirit does speak a little differently to those who have certain ministry gifts. As a rule, in the lives of believers, the inward voice is the voice of the human spirit speaking, not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit often guides, speaks to me about others, but I never hear, hear him for my own benefit. Why? Because a prophet's ministry isn't given for his benefit. It's given for the benefit of others. I have to receive guidance for myself just the way everyone else does, through the inward voice. As we learn to obey the voice of our spirit, we will come to a place where we know what we should do in all phases of life. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The Lord will guide us. And I'll just share something quickly. that is thrilling to me and that is I just have a uh, such a knowing that there's this place called eternity and I can see it in my mind's eye and God, it's just, and I know it just comes from what it's saying right here. Giving the word first place. Instantly obeying the voice of our spirit. Meditating in the word of God. Practicing the word of God. And I just listened to my own video called, <laughs> I get blessed by my own videos. It's called, um, How Do I Know? And you know, I don't know how to um, find that video myself. I can't find it. I have 261 videos on there and I don't know how to search for that particular one. But anyway, it's called, How Do I Know? Oh, it's so good. And um, we, I know everybody I'm listening to has had his own personal experience of knowing that God exists, that he is. And the more and more, the more and more we spend time getting to know him, the more and more real all of those things that are invisible will become to us. It's so exciting follow God. I remember hearing about this, how to train the human spirit before, and it seemed like such drudgery. Oh, I have to 
take this time. Oh, I have to do this and this and this. And I was so rebellious. And now it's like, oh, thank you, God. You're getting me ready for the big time. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're all going to spend forever there. Oh, and mm, it's exciting. It's just flat exciting to get to get to get excited about the reality of God instead of being so worried about every day and every morning and every little detail of our of our actions but to actually like kind of lose ourselves get lost in the reality of God every day as many times in the day as we can praise the lord